there's an incredible amount of information, agricultural information to be gained from Australian Aboriginal people if we care to look. It's in, the, um, it's in all the uh, explorer's journals. Charles Sturt, when he was looking for the inland sea, climbing sand dune after sand dune after sand dune. Uh, Poole is already dead, the surgeon of the group. The horses can only walk in a straight line. Sturt is half blind from scurvy. Um, a lot of the other men are, are disoriented by scurvy. They climb one sand dune, they look down into a valley and they're hailed by 400 Aboriginal people who rush forward and give them water, which they got from a well they had dug. Um, they then turn to an animal they've never seen before, the horse, and they give that horse water. Uh, they then feed Sturt's party with roast duck and cake. In the dead heart of Australia, they feed them with roast duck and cake. And Mitchell, uh, sorry, Sturt says, and Mitchell also said this of the same plant um, in a different part of the country, but Sturt said the cake that he ate there was the lightest and sweetest he'd ever tasted. We've got a hundred cooking shows in Australia today. This has never been mentioned. You know, <laughs> they're looking for an advantage all the time of, you know, this in quinoa and all this stuff from exotic countries. And here in Australia, we still do not know the name of the plant that went to make the sweetest and lightest cakes an Englishman had ever tasted. Now, the English can't cook. We know that. <laughs> so it may be that he's, you know, impressed by not much. But we suspect, we suspect that that is true because we've cooked with this plant now and its aroma is fantastic. Its taste is incredible. And it's only surpassed, in my mind, by kangaroo grass. The flavour of that is, is extraordinary. We'll be eating these breads in two or three years. We'll be eating Murnong probably the same length of time. Uh, we'll be growing it in our backyards. 